This is an introduction to the FSM Family Health and Safety Study presentation. A content warning up front. The following material and data deal with domestic violence. This is a sensitive area, and it's an area that has personally affected the lives of some of my students, may have affected your life. If this material does disturb you and you need support, uh, counseling services uh, are there to help provide that support. If you're here on Pompeii, you can certainly contact Pennsylvania Etza. That's the head of our counseling services. You can also contact counseling services at your own campus. And there are, in some instances, the states also offer some support. But it is a sensitive topic, but it is one that uh, certainly is an area that we can maybe shed some light on with some statistics. Now, in 2014, the FSM Department of Health, along with support from the Australian Embassy, conducted a family health and safety study. This would lead later to the 9th Pompeii Legislature enacting the Family Safety Act. Previous work had occurred in Koh Shrai. Koh Shrai has a domestic violence law that they passed earlier, as does Pompeii. And uh, you can read some of that here in the description. Violence by men against women continues in the FSM. In October 2019, the Attorney General for Yap State was shot and killed. Uh, as noted in the article, a mother and brother were shot and killed allegedly by the father and mother's children in a domestic violence incident. That one happened off island, but it involved uh, our, our young people. And in January 2020, a woman right, living in Palika here on Pompeii was beaten to death. Her partner and the father of her two children was arrested and charged. These are very tragic deaths. These are sad deaths. These are people we know. These are people we love. These are people we care about. So the data comes from a very serious and sobering study. This is a ongoing issue in the FSM. And uh, maybe statistics can help us shed some light on it. As has been the case, you'll be given a blank presentation which you can see here, uh, and that's what you'll be submitting. And on Wednesday or Friday, up to you, you'll be able to give a presentation on Zoom to share your presentation with me and whoever else happens to be online. I've held off from assigning time slots. I know your schedules are not something you can always predict. If I assign people a time, and then they can't show up at that time because something happens. That seems odd. What we'll do is I'll run open sessions, just as I've done the last couple Wednesdays. You can come on. If you come on, someone might be presenting. You can wait, and then when they're done, uh, or whoever is next in line can present. You can sit and watch other people's presentations as well. That's what we do in class. If we had a class, you'd be presenting in front of the whole class. So here you at least don't have to stand up in front of a group of people. You'll be sharing your presentation uh, on the screen, and you can do that a little bit more anonymously. Now, the data, there's a link, by the way. The second link is to the actual Family Health and Safety Study from 2014. I'll cross-check that that's, that's still posted, still online. It's been six years. But it's our most recent data we've got to work with. And the data is, is uh, you'll see here, uh, hmm. Yes, I got different accounts on this phone. Uh, the data, pull that data up, is there's a series of questions here. They're grouped into four broad categories. I wouldn't worry too much about the categories, but they, that's just the categories that they, they came from. You might want to read some of this down here, and there's links on more information. But you'll see in the, in the 2014 study, they surveyed women in all four states of the FSM. By they, I mean uh, what was done was FSM uh, women were trained to give the survey, and then the, the women in a state, like Kutrayan women, interviewed other Kutrayan women. Chukis women interviewed other Chukis women. Pompeian women interviewed Pompeian women. 
Yappies women interviewed Yappies women. This was to help the women feel comfortable about sharing something that's very private and very sensitive, the issue of physical violence. But it was also done because it helps assure that the answers they were giving are likely to be honest answers. Remember, the interviewers, to some extent, know the interviewee. I mean, they're from the same island. They kind of know some, probably know something about each other. And so it would, you know, if, if, if a woman was not speaking truthfully, the interviewer would say, you know, well, hey, uh, Seppe, you and I both know that what's really going on. Speak the truth. Don't, your name won't appear in the study. It's anonymous. There's no names. And uh, so for each metric, so let's take a look at one. This in con A down here in B2, the percent of women who have ex ever experienced sexual violence. And then over here in columns C, D, E, and F, you can see that this is the percent of women in that second row there. Let's take that second row. Uh, it's the percent of women who have ever experienced violence, um, sexual violence specifically. So 11% of the women in Chuk, 15% in Koshai, 5% in Pompeii, and 4.8% in Yap state have experienced sexual violence. And you can see that for each of these questions. Forced intercourse, essentially rape. Uh, that would be 10% of the women in Chuk. That's rather incredible if you think about it. That's 1 in 10 women in Chuk have been raped. Uh, that's, that's terrible. Uh, th it should be zero. But not only is it terrible, but it means if you know, say you know 20 or 30 women from Chuk, two or three of them have probably been raped. This is a very sensitive topic. Um, very difficult, very challenging. And uh, again, if, you, if, you need, if you're dealing with issues from your own past, we do have counseling support services. You can reach out to them uh, for help. Uh, the state sometimes provide to this. This is wrong. Uh, um, but 8.6% of the women in Koshai, 3.8% uh, of the women in Pompeii have been have experienced forcible sexual intercourse against sex against their will. 3.8% uh, in Yap. And so physical violence, husband, if she gets angry. There's a series of different areas. You can see the four broad areas over here. And then specific question each area. And the numbers are arranged in a manner such that higher numbers are generally a worse outcome. Uh, as it notes that some of the questions were recast from the study. So, uh, for example, uh, down here in... Um, the wife is obliged to have sex with the husband. It was originally cast as a negative question, and I flipped it and the percentages to it so that the higher numbers are um, are, are more problematic. So uh, a wife is obliged to have sex with her husband. She must, no choice. 53% of the women in Chuk say yes, that, that's true. 41% say yes in Koshrai. 35% say yes in Pompeii. Only 23% of the women in Yap. I would say that that's the case. One in four, as opposed to half of the women here. And then these are reasons, you see, like, for example, down here, reasons women cannot refuse sex, etc., etc. So you can read through these. It's disturbing. These are the percentage of women. All of these are percentage, by state, by state. But you'll notice the numbers aren't the same in every state. And so the question that the 2014 study did not actually tackle uh, it was an FSM-wide study, technically. But are there differences in the percentages by states? Can you characterize those state-level differences statistically and report on the differences? And are those differences even statistically significant, or is it just random? Uh, so are there significant differences by state? Do women report having less control over their bodies and experience more sexual violence in some states than others? And if you can... Don't just make a chart of all these numbers. That's meaningless. Find some kind of meaningful, statistically meaningful chart. Pretend that you're presenting to a group of, say, elected officials uh, to talk about legislative remedies, or you might be talking to a group of public health care 
workers or you might be speaking to a women's group, your audience is some sort of general audience and you want to be able to tell them if there are state level differences. Because if there are state level differences, there's a couple of things that that would open up the possibility for. One, it means those states that are having more difficulties with domestic violence should be getting more resources from the FSM and the state government to help with women's issues. That's a cry for help. And if a state is having more trouble than another state, that's where the resources should go. Instead of splitting money four ways, the state with the worst problems should get more money. Now, the other thing that the a state level difference would tell us possibly is maybe a state that has better numbers, which would be smaller numbers in this case, smaller overall percentages, maybe a state that has smaller numbers is has things they can help the other states learn and do to help make the lives of women better in the, in the states that have more problems. So maybe there's patterns or legislation or, or whatever, but if, if there are. Now, if there's no difference between the four states, then we have nothing to learn from each other, so to speak, if you see what I'm saying. Um, but if there are differences, maybe the states that are doing better at protecting women, uh, uh, maybe those states have something to teach those that are having a greater challenges in protecting their women. Throughout our nation, there's a broad agreement. Women are to be protected. They are the future of your nation. They are, for three of the states, they are the clan line. They are your mothers. They are your sisters. Nobody should be uh, violent towards your mother or your sister. And uh, ask any son or any brother, and, and they will do anything they can to defend their mother or their sister. Uh, that's, that's traditionally... Traditionally, brothers uh, defend sisters, uh, fathers protect their wives, they're the mothers of their children. This is an old tradition. So um, the real tradition is women are protected and respected and um, are really important in, in all of our families. And so violence against women is always wrong. There's, it's always wrong. But you'll find some odd statistics in here. For example, here uh, in B6, a good reason for him to hit her. Now, remember, the people answering the survey are actually women. Men were not being surveyed. The question was, what do women experience? And so, a good reason for, the, for him to hit her. The husband finds out she's been unfaithful. You can see here, 71% of the women in Truk believe that they deserve to be hit if she's unfaithful. 83% of the women in Koshrai, 83% think they should be hit if they're unfaithful to their husband. 45% in Pompeii, 17% in Yap. This is an incredible number, and it's always deeply puzzling to me. If my wife is unfaithful to me, how is hitting her going to help? If I hit her, I'm simply driving her into the arms of the other man that she's unfaithful to me with. That makes no sense whatsoever. If I'm trying to win her back, then I need to do something other than hitting her. I need to give her a reason to want to be with me. I've always felt that way, and I've always you know, saw it as, you know, I should be giving my wife reasons to be with me uh, every day if possible. Uh, I'm not very good at it, but I, I should be giving her reasons to want to be with me and to not want to be uh, off with somebody else. But if she does, hey, <laughs> she's, <laughs> that's up to her. I don't get to hit her. Um, that, that's not a solution, and that's wrong. But with the women... Australian women, I think uh, 83% of them think they should be uh, hit in that situation. And so you'll see some of these, and some of these are like, uh, a good reason, the wife doesn't complete the housework. 47% of the women in truth think they should be physically hit for not completing the housework. If your the housework isn't done, 
Pitch in. Help. Maybe your wife is overloaded. Hello. I always come back to, what's wrong with you? Hitting your wife doesn't get the housework done. But if you help her, A, the housework will get done. B, your wife will probably love you all the more. You'll have a much happier marriage. All these things create unhappy marriages. And you don't want to be in an unhappy marriage. Well, let me see. It should be added to good reason for him. It is. I can use some editing. Well, those are, these are the questions. These are the percentages. You're looking at state level differences, differences in this direction, uh, whether there's a difference between true kosher, pompe, and yap on these issues. As I said, it tells us how to divide up resources. It tells us where we might learn lessons. It tells us where our efforts need to be focused. As you're working on this, bear in mind that, that what you may have picked up in 12.2, you can use the ideas of 12.2. Specifically, there is a multi-column section to 12.2. What happens when you have multiple columns of the same variable uh, from different samples? That's certainly the case here. We have percentages from each state. It's the same variable in four states. So uh, you can certainly take a look at this as an idea for how to tackle this particular, you know, what can I do with this? I've got four statistics and I've got the same variable. Multiple variables with the same units. What are the units? Percent of women who have responded affirmatively to the question being asked. There are some ideas here for how to tackle that. Uh, that would be, this would be a different case. We're not tackling that one. And take a look also at 12.3. 12.3 just simply says, don't try to do something you don't know how to do. In the wild, as it says down here, there are many more tools to consider. All sorts of fancy statistical tools. F-tests, an analysis of variance, confidence intervals for slopes, tests for different... Uh, don't worry about those. You're left with what you can do. You can do basic statistics. Chapters 1, 2, 3... You can do uh, cor you can potentially do correlations, but in this case, it's not paired data. You've got four columns, so that won't do you a lot of good. But you can look at confidence intervals. You might look at hypothesis tests against known population means. You could treat the data as a whole population. You've only got a few tools you can throw at this. Use the tools you know how to use. The charts you've been learned how to use. You've learned about histograms. You've learned about box plots. Use those things you know how to use as you tackle this last uh, data set, last presentation. Again, a sensitive issue, an ongoing issue, uh, and one that's of concern, uh, ongoing concern, and that uh, many groups have been working to improve the, the situation for the lives of women, both here in the FSM and women living in the diaspora. And so, as I say, sensitive, sensitive issues, sensitive topics, uh, people we know and love who have been hurt, sometimes maybe you have been hurt, uh, again, reach out. You are not alone. There are, there are people out there to help you deal with whatever you have gone through or are going through. Um, and so... Do not, do not feel you are alone. You are not alone. There are people out there uh, who care and want to help you. Well, with that said, that's the introduction to the data for the last presentation. Real world actual data from an actual study here in the FSM. And a study that uh, did not look at the state level differences, but looked at, uh, at the FSM wide differences. But in the appendices, the state level breakouts for each of the questions were given, and that allowed the data set you're looking at to be constructed. So what could you advise public health officials? What could you advise counselors? What could you advise state legislators uh, to do based on that data that you saw there? There are links in the spreadsheet. 
you can certainly look at those to learn more about the topic if you wish to. There are more um, issues on quest, you know, some links to some related topics, the uh, issues of human trafficking in the FSM, which relate to the to the issues of violence against women. Uh, women who are trafficked often experience sexual and physical violence. And uh, I think I'd close with saying that um, the number one most important thing that any nation can do to protect the women of the nation is to ensure that all women get an education. It is far easier to traffic and abuse an uneducated woman who doesn't understand that what's happening to them is wrong than it is to traffic and abuse an educated woman. Educating women protects women. Women's education is a key element to protecting women, and in turn, that protects the family, that protects the children, that protects the society. It's a win-win-win-win situation when women are given full access to education uh, and to, to, uh, to being a, a full participant in, uh, in the society around them. Chance to, you know, to become educated and to move up into positions of uh, leadership in their societies. Very important to addressing these issues.